operations specifically in the Eastern Cape province this afternoon as South Africans and supporters have geared up from the early hours of the morning clad in their green and gold some of which all are clad in their South African flags waiting uh, to see the green and gold bus make its way one pit stop that is is where our reporter Janine is a uh, very good afternoon to Janine just take us through as we uh, continue to anticipate and build up to excitement and seeing uh, the spring box this afternoon so we've had a quick stop here at Dispatch, at the Rugby Stadium here in Dispatch. You can see an enthusiastic um, supporter there. Maybe he'll move away. But the crowd that you are seeing in the back, um, these are predominantly people that are from the Dispatch area. And this is Rati Rasmus' hometown. So they were really excited to see Rati. The bus made a quick stop here. It's a comfort break for the players and for everybody on the buses. And then we are going to be making our way to through to Utenag. And then the the whole victory tour procession will make its way back to the Port Elizabeth area with a number of stops on the way. It was quite interesting coming into dispatch. There was loud music playing. Um, much of it blaring out was, Hier kom die bokker, hier kom die bokker. So great excitement for the people of Dispatch. Uh, just sometimes I think they feel that this whole convoy is moving too fast and they want it to be a bit slower so they can catch a glimpse of their heroes. Coming into Dispatch, uh, Rusty Erasmus and Springbok Captain uh, Sia Khaleesi were holding up the Web Ellis Trophy together, so that was really nice. I'm sure that Rusty Erasmus was extremely proud to be here in his hometown with such a wonderful win under his belt. We will be leaving here shortly. The whole procession is running a little bit behind time, but that is to be expected. Our time through Sweden and New Brighton was extremely slow. There were thousands and thousands of people, and you can understand um, most of the procession had to go along very, very slowly to make sure that nobody was bumped or knocked. They were so excited to see the players running alongside the bus and waving their flags. It's been a relatively long day for the players and and management uh, on this procession. It started just after 9 o'clock this morning at the Port Elizabeth beachfront, and then we made our way through the city to City Hall, where they were given a bit of a send-off by the mayor, and then down the long Governor Becky, and then we came to New Brighton and Sweden. And as you can imagine, the welcome for the players, especially Sia Khaleesi, was absolutely amazing. And as you can see now, there is the, the bus with the players. It's starting to reverse out. You can see some of the Springbok players sitting atop, on top of that bus there. We're going to be following that bus shortly. There they go climbing up so they can be visible for all their fans. And great excitement wherever we have been today. And I have no doubt that for the rest of the stops along this tour, it's going to be nothing less than we've experienced all the way. I think the players, not in their wildest dreams, ever expected that their welcome here in the Eastern Cape would be so tremendous and so fantastic. And it's an emotional moment for the people of the Eastern Cape because we are seen as the nursery of South African rugby and very often due to a lack of funds and sponsorship, we often lose some of our top players to other more profitable franchises. But today is a moment that does belong to the Eastern Cape and it's given the people a chance of the Nelson Mandela Bay Metro, which includes Utenag, Dispatch and Port Elizabeth, a chance to celebrate with their heroes and to share this special moment. We expect in the convoy at a later stage when it does get back to Port Elizabeth, it will make a short stop at the massive Greenacre shopping centre, which will be a point for many of the spectators in the surrounding suburbs of Port Elizabeth. We have heard that they have made their way there and are paying the way to string bucks to arrive. To no doubt, another very warm welcome. And I'm sure that we will see Captain Kanisi and his band of merry men pumping their chest, chests and waving that Web Ellis trophy as he's done from the start of this tour. And this morning it started just after 9 o'clock and the guys have been so enthusiastic and I imagine they are extremely tired of the tour but they are the people of the East have come out to support them by their thousands. It's back to you in the studio. We will be touching in with you a little bit later to update you where the Victory Tour bus is.
Thank you very much, Janine, for SABC News taking us through with the bus leaving dispatch. Let's cross over uh, back to Kim Daniels, who's standing by outside the Green Acres uh, shopping centre in Port Elizabeth this afternoon. Kim uh, still seeing smiles on many of the supporters' uh, faces as they wait in anticipation for that bus to make its way there to the shopping centre this afternoon. <laughs> Of course, everyone is still so happy and still so excited um, that the Springboks are coming to Green Acres Mall. I spoke to a lady just now. Unfortunately, I can't show her because my cable is too short. But uh, she's been waiting here since 7 o'clock this morning for her favourites to come out here. There's a lot of young boys and young girls waiting to meet their heroes. Um, as I don't know if you can see, but the sun is coming out a little bit. The rain has cleared. Obviously, the wind hasn't stopped as this is the Windy City. We can never deny that the wind is not, never going to be here, but uh, it doesn't matter what the uh, weather conditions are, you know, um, they want, um, PE wants everyone to know that they have the Gias, they're ready to um, accept and celebrate the spring box. Um, I understand from the organizers committing the side that they wanted to do a Mexican wave. I think they're just about to do that. Um, if my cameraman Kubisi can just start on the one side and show them. Okay, three, two, one, let's go. As you can see, they are so excited. They cannot wait for the spring box to come. Um, as I understand, they're less than an hour away. Um, excited and the, they say the closer that it gets to the time, the longer it feels. Our are really excited, they cannot wait. We have the spirit, we have that tears, we can't wait to receive our boys. over now to Laranto. Uh, we do believe that that is where the bus will be making its way next. Uh, Laranto, just a couple of moments from now, those supporters will be able to see some of their fans uh, come around the corner in the bus. Rasmus. Sir, the bus is going to come down. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling so great. Go Rashi! Say go Rashi, go Rashi! Go Rashi! Well, as you can hear, people here have come out in their numbers waving the Springbok flag. So much excitement. The bus is literally like two minutes away from us. People here are so excited to see the Springboks. They can't even contain their joy. People screaming, hardly able to contain their joy because Sia Polisi, Rasi Erasmus are literally five minutes away from them. The bus following us as the SABC van. As you can see, shots of dispatch painting the streets gold and green and yellow. So how do you feel about the Springboks here? I'm feeling great, man. I'm feeling great. I'm a great Springbok. to show them that beautiful cup. So we're going to talk 
try to show you now how close the bus is. My cameraman Kobani Blom will show you just how close this bus is. Literally, they are five minutes behind us. That is the bus just, be just behind us, carrying that beautiful cup, the Wembley cup, the Walt Ellis cup. And Rasia Rasmus lifting up that cup, showing the people here that I'm proud to be back home, proud to show you this cup. Visuals there, people excited, welcoming their hero, Rusty Rasmus. As you can see, both young and old have come out, people dancing, singing, so excited. There's that beautiful cup being lifted up there. Those are fans from Dispatch painting the streets of Dispatch, green and gold. The excitement here is so tangible. History in the making from this town. Never did they imagine that the Springbok coach who won the World Cup would come from Dispatch. A moment in history for people here. The excitement here is so tangible. This is a moment in history for the Eastern Cape to have a captain and a coach come from this province facing a lot of economic problems but today is saying you know what despite those problems we have something to celebrate as you can see there the trophy being lifted there in the sky there is place from the spring box taking time to lift the World Ellis Trophy. Who would have thought that an international cup like this would come to a small town of dispatch? That is the Webb Ellis Trophy in dispatch. Who would have thought? Black child, it is so possible. There you can see Shad Le Kobani Blow, my cameraman, showing you visuals. Flags in the sky, the city of dispatch, painted in different colors, green, black, gold, but celebrating the spring box. That beautiful moment there, the Web, Web Ellis Trophy in the sky in dispatch. Who would have thought, truly, all our dreams are valid. As you can see, people from dispatch have come out. People from all races are here to celebrate this moment in history. They are so excited to be here, to see their own Rasi Rasmus lift the cup and make every child realize that no matter where you come from, no matter how small of a town you come from, if you work hard and dream and stay disciplined, you can achieve all your dreams. So you see shots now, people singing, people singing, Sia Police, they're so excited. People screaming their excitement, singing, Imiguijo, excited, celebrating the spring box. The trophy will now make its way out of dispatch, then to Utenegh, a small town right next to dispatch, and then finally make its way to Green Acres for the last stop, where the captain will address the many supporters waiting for them to hear what they have to say before they depart and go to Cape Town. You will imagine that the security here is very, very tight because we are walking and we are alongside the world champions who are excited as well. There you see Faf, Faf in true colors, his undies, someone to explain that as well. People in their cars screaming in celebration because the cup has come home to dispatch the home of Rasi Rasmus. Everyone's so excited. Everyone's so excited to see the cup coming to the small town of Dispatch and the excitement is so tangible. As I said, the cup is making its way now out of Utenegg, out of Dispatch, through to Utenegg, another small town close to Dispatch. From there, it will go to Greenacres, where the team is expected to address the many fans gathered there already um, in celebration of the Springboks coming and bringing this cup to the friendly city of Port Elizabeth. What you see in shot right now is a high police contingency um, following just in front of the Springboks, making sure that that trophy is secured. Its insurance is half a million rand so we want to make sure that it's safe and obviously that the assets the spring box are also kept safe the shot you see there are people still standing along the street everyone hoping to take a shot a selfie perhaps with their favorites on the spring box team people obviously now the numbers are decreasing people more closer to the to the cup but people along the street as well waving saying hi spring box we are here standing waiting for you five to clack a beautiful uh, emblem then saying the 50 clock are waiting for you as well.
We are seeing flags, we are seeing people lifting up their bags, screaming in excitement, saying that they are waiting to see the Springboks as well. Those are more people standing on the side of the street. People have come out on a Sunday when they should be resting, but they are saying, we'll not rest. How can we rest when our national hero, Rasi Erasmus, who comes from this town, is here with a once a life opportunity to see their people more sing Igwe, you're excited. In a few minutes time, they'll get to see the cup as well. This sort of people along the street, screaming in excitement. Others dancing, standing around, waiting on their cell phones to take the once a lifetime shot of the cup here in dispatch. Beautiful scenes indeed. You see people from all races, black, white, Indians, saying that, you know what, tonight or oh, today is not about any race, it's about the rainbow race, the rainbow nation, unity and diversity, and that's what this World Cup means. And as you see more and more people gathered along the streets, this is one of the longest streets in dispatch, but people saying so, they're going to make sure they fill the street capacity in support of this wonderful team that's done so much for the people of the Eastern Cape and above the people of dispatch. As you can see, there are people along the streets lined up, all waiting to see this trophy. Everyone obviously very excited to see this trophy come to smash. Let's see some young people here. They're waiting for the trophy. Let's see what they have to say. Hello, guys. Are you guys excited to see the trophy? Excuse me? Are you guys excited to see the trophy? Yes. Who is your favorite and Who would you guys want to see? Andrew Fuller, but he's not here. Who else? Who is not here? Who else would you like to see? Um, Chislin told me. Okay, why do you like him so much? Because he's very fast. He's very fast. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Who's your favorite player? Who do you want to see? Um, Jason Colby. And ma'am, why is it important for you to bring your young girls to experience this history in the making for the small town? I think it's a great thing to look for dispatch and all that you can see on the UP door. Great thing. Awesome people here saying that they are sighted and it was important for the city to make sure that they are here to experience this once a lifetime experience. You will see right now that the bus is now coming closer to us and in short now if I see correctly that's Faf standing on top there uh, in celebration excited to see the box. <laughs> so as you can see those are the spring box there in short. They are coming now with that much anticipated cup. Those are residents that you see to the side. Uh, I took breath as well, wait to see this trophy. No one wants to leave. It's been a cold morning, but everyone's saying, no, no matter what, I'm going to make sure that I stand here and see this cup for myself, face to face with my own eyes. Sissy, how... Because uh, we've seemed to lost the Murata in the crowd there as those many supporters are now seemingly chasing uh, the green and yellow bus making its way through dispatch there uh, with the policing contingent there we're seeing scores and scores of people on a very very long road uh, from dispatch making its way now to you today we're seeing um, Many supporters, both old and young, a male and female, uh, coming out and showcasing what essentially the support is for them. Many have been waiting as early as 6 a.m. this morning. We can see that the weather has not been too kind to the supporters uh, in uh, East London or rather in Eastern Cape this afternoon with the uh, uh, Thunder showers, light thunder showers early on this morning, and then of course that uh, autonomous. Uh, PE wind and uh, now we're seeing it starting to drizzle yet again but that does not seem to be uh, deterring any of the supporters there we can actually uh, see what the weather looks like there with uh, many of the South African flags being uh, flown on the corners of the streets there uh, we can also see the roads that have been blockaded there as this bridge the bus is making its way over this bridge which is over uh, one of the key motorways in Port Elizabeth uh, the bus has just left 
dispatch making its way now as it turns around the corner to the next pit stop that is Utenag. It's also going to include, of course, the Nelson Mandela Peace Park and uh, the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium. And then uh, the last pit stop for this afternoon will then be the final Green Acres shopping centre in the town of Port Elizabeth. These are the live visuals. If you have just tuned in, we have been giving you live rolling coverage of the Springboks Victorious Heroes Tour. It is day two, uh, the final uh, leg of their tour. And of course, they're followed by the two other busing contingents. Uh, and then we can see there uh, at the top, some of the cars have also stopped uh, to see the Springboks. We're seeing many of the Springbok players there right at the top, of course, Webb Ellis Cup in hand, showcasing it to uh, the many supporters and fans and dreamers uh, and fellow uh, rugby dreamers in the, the Eastern Cape province. Now we're seeing the bus make its way off one of the main roads. It is coming now onto what looks like the freeway. I believe this freeway is then going to, well, this route rather on the freeway is then going to be uh, making its way to Utenag. Of course, a very, very big uh, policing and security contingent. Uh, much more contained than what we saw yesterday. Let's cross over to Janine, uh, one of our various reporters that have continued to give us uh, the blow-by-blow -blow minute details of what is happening with some of those supporters. Janine? So we are coming to you from a short stretch of highway that links the back with Utenay. We are currently now on our way to Utenay. We had the quick stop in the back, which is Rossi Erasmus's hometown. Uh, he was so excited to be on that bus and to see what we could possibly say are oh, his people. Um, you can see him there now at the top of the bus, raising his arm. I think it's him from here. Um, and it was quite nice because for most of the trip, Sia Khaleesi had been holding that trophy very tight. And then as we came into the dispatch area, they swapped roles and we had Rusty Rasmus on top of that bus. And he was holding the Web Ellis trophy to show basically to his people. We stopped briefly at the rugby stadium in the back, just a comfort break for the players because they've had quite a long trip without any breaks. And um, it also gave the fans a chance to see their players up close without the convoy moving on quite quickly. It was nice to see also that the fans below were throwing caps up to the players and various items and the players were signing them and dropping them back down um, to the fans who have been absolutely super supportive from the moment we left Port Elizabeth. Their route has basically been lined by thousands and thousands of people bar for this like strip that you see now where we are on the highway which gives the vehicles a chance to catch up and make up some time because the convoy is running a little bit behind schedule as you can imagine. Many people just wanted that bus to stop. It was only going at 20 kilometers an hour but through Zweedy and New Brighton the fans were so enthusiastic. One car even drove between the police and the tour bus and stopped the bus in its track and then they had to be forcibly removed by the, by the police. But you can see more people now basically at intersection as we are getting a little bit closer to the Utenag area. The tour will do a short little circuit through some of the areas of Utenag and then it will start making its way back to Port Elizabeth. The fact has been amazing and I'm sure so will Utenag. And I believe there's a big party waiting in PE and my colleagues will be there to update you when we get to Port Elizabeth. But from us now, it's en route to Utenag before we head back to Port Elizabeth. Janine taking us through uh, the route there as they left uh, dispatch making their way to Utenag. We also have uh, Kim Daniels uh, standing by. Uh, she's waiting at the Green Acres Shopping Center with many of supporters. Long, long, long hours, but still there's smiles on their faces, Kim. <laughs> Um, I know we've speaking, been speaking a lot about rugby and our young boys that can grow up and they aspire to be Sia Khaleesi's, they aspire to be sticks. But out here right now, I'm standing with the girls. I'm standing with the girls and I know I spoke to one lady here at the back and she said she actually wants to become a rugby player herself. Um, tell us about your dreams and your aspirations. Um, well, I'm really into rugby. I've been since I was a little kid. I actually met some of the rugby players when I was younger. 
Um, I don't know, it's just what I'm really into because I like testing the limit society sets and female rugby players aren't really common. It's something I want to do. <laughs> That's absolutely beautiful. And other ladies also love to watch rugby. Uh, tell us why you're here today. I just see my husband. <laughs> <laughs> so it's safe to say you're here to be a wife of a rugby player. Yes, I'm a wag. <laughs> Look on your arm, you're my favorite. <laughs> Can you tell me why arm is your favorite? I just love how he plays rugby and Phenomenal. to me, he's just the best player on the team. <laughs> <laughs> and for you, ma'am, how, how are you feeling? Are you excited to be here? So excited. Um, I'm here to see Malcolm Marks and Damien because I feel like they carried the team a lot. It would have been nice if Pollard was here too, but... <laughs> As she said, Pollard unfortunately isn't here on this tour because he has a cheekbone injury that he got um, in the final against England. He did play a vital role, you know, in the final with that golden boot of ease, kicking all those conversions, kicking those penalties for us to be great. So a lot of them are sad. But going back to the fans, um, who are you here to support? I'm here to support Sia. <laughs> he is the son of the soil, homeboy. Are you proud of him? I'm very proud of him to just know that someone actually from the Eastern Cape is there to represent in South Africa. Yeah. Coming to the older ladies. <laughs> Ma'am, how are you feeling? Are you excited to be here? I'm very excited, my dear. I'm here to support our boys. All of them. <laughs> That's great. And you, ma'am, how are you feeling? Very, very excited to see Khaleesi and the Beast. I want to see him and Fat if he's available. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, it's not just our men that are excited and our boys that feel that our national boys are, are heroes, but they feel that um, our girls love the rugby. They either want to be rugby players or want to be wives of rugby players. But they're all out here to support the homeboys who are on a break now, as Janine has said before me, but they will be here shortly. Talking to some of our women and girl supporters, some future uh, rugby stars in our midst. Let's cross over now to Lerato Fekese. Uh, of course, uh, she got a glimpse of all the excitement of those fans as the uh, Springboks bus had just passed through. Lerato, many of the supporters waiting long hours just saw uh, some of their greatest, greatest idols. Take us through the experience of the supporters at Dispatch this afternoon. Rato, just from our side, we saw those visuals of the green and gold bus make its way through with thousands of supporters. Very, very excited. And just take us through some of the experience that you've made to gauge from some of the supporters. Right, unfortunately, uh, Lorata still seems to be caught up in the midst. Perhaps she can't hear us because of the amount of screaming of supporters as the bus had just made its way through the dispatch area. We'll, we'll cross back to her in just a bit. Uh, also speaking to our reporters, uh, Janine, who's also been on standby, as well as Kim, uh, speaking to some fellow female supporters and also uh, some of them noting their uh, crushes on some of the rugby team contingents there. Uh, but also just uh, saying essentially, uh, what uh, the Rugby World Cup has meant for them and of course uh, what essentially it has meant to the fraternity uh, from the Eastern Cape province. Um, we will also continue to give you those live visuals that have been coming through of the green and gold bus and uh, we've also seen of course uh, the stars being right at the top there, um, Cecilia Colisi as well as Fafti Pissi and all the likes as they've been taking turns uh, and uh, the supporters in Port Elizabeth today have been very very loyal to the Springboks. Uh, we've seen them go through four seasons of weather uh, from about 7am this morning. All right, it seems as though Lorato can hear us now. Lorato, we're going to try this again. We saw how excited uh, those supporters got as we just saw the bus make its way through dispatch. Take us through the sentiment experience from uh, the community this afternoon. I think it's one of the experiences that you, pulled you put down in your diary as really life-changing. What's been really um, touching for me, I must say, is just to speak to young people who have looked at Rasi Erasmus and said, you know what, if a guy can come from a small town that perhaps is not, not even noticed on the map, but put dispatch on the map by his achievement, then anything is possible. 
if a child from Ezwide, like Sia Kolisi, can come to the ranks, come from a disadvantaged primary school, work his way up, stay disciplined and work hard, then anything is possible. People here have been excited, are still excited. I think a really touching moment is when Rasi Erasmus drove past on the bus, lifted that trophy up, holding Sia Kolisi's hand and saying that, you know what, this moment here is from the Springboks. I remember reading an article about Rasi Erasmus and he had said that in order to motivate the Springboks, he made them reflect on the challenges facing South Africans, challenges of illiteracy, challenges of poverty, challenges of unemployment. He says that let that be the fuel. Let them look at us as a Springbok and let them find hope in our story. So Rusty Erasmus also one of the heroes in making sure that we win this World Cup. And I think the message from the people in the Eastern Cape, the message from the people in dispatch is that this is a story of hope, a story of unity and diversity, a story of togetherness that you know what, no matter our racial differences, no matter what we are facing, if we can just put those aside and just unite and focus on one common goal, truly like the Spring have shown anything is truly possible so people are still excited the bus on its way you and eventually will go to green acres but it has been an interesting morning from the city hall to zwide to wolfson stadium to utenek to dispatch to green acres but the message is one, there is always hope. And above all, dear child, no matter how small or young you are, no matter where you come from, your background, your dreams are so valid. Uh, thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, possibly, we're still seeing some of those very excited young supporters behind you. Perhaps you can gauge some sentiment from them on how they can uh, essentially describe their experience of actually seeing uh, those heroes live. Dada, you got to see the bus for yourself. How was that experience for you? Um, it was quite exciting. Yeah. 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 Those are young people saying that they've been inspired by Sia Kolisi and the likes that anything is possible and to see them face to face was a truly life-changing experience. But for now, it's a wrap on the Eastern Cape and it's back to you in studio. Thank you very much, Lorata, just taking us uh, through some of the sentiments of uh, uh, some of the supporters there. And uh, the two gentlemen that you just spoke to saying that they were very, very happy. And of course, it's an experience that they cannot describe a once in a lifetime um, experience and be able to actually see or come face to face with their heroes. There we see, it seems uh, that the Springboks coach, uh, Sia Kualisi, has not run out of energy. It has been a very, very long morning uh, as the supporters have been waiting throughout the early hours they had uh, taken a short uh, break in dispatch at the hometown of uh, the coach uh, Rasi Erasmus and it seems though that uh, the Springboks are all set to go re-energized uh, Sia Kolisi uh, standing right at the center on the top of that bus as it's uh, making its way uh, earlier on we showed you images as it left dispatch making its way onto the uh, freeway motorcade and now we're seeing uh, what looks like it may its way into the town of dispatch uh, we have been crossing over to our reporters on the ground who have been taking us through of course um, how people have been waiting and the celebrations that have been taking place there's music all over port elizabeth uh, towns this afternoon and of course traffic for a very very slow town a very very busy port elizabeth town uh, this afternoon uh, just taking you through some of the sentiments there of the supporters describing it as unbelievable actually seeing their heroes live another point in case is uh, uh, Tabiso Sitole who is standing outside the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium and of course earlier on we saw that there weren't too many people but now it seems to have built up momentum as the bus is set to make its way uh, to you. Tabiso just take us through the excitement on your end.
All right, uh, we will get uh, Tabisa on the line very shortly. It is very, very noisy where our uh, reporters are situated and one can only imagine with all the screams and of course music. There's music, there's DJs, there's hosts in all the designated pit stops that uh, the bus is going to be stopping into uh, this afternoon. Uh, and there we're starting to see the crowds starting to build up, getting as close to the bus as possible. And look at the frenzy of the crowd there as well as all those South African flags and uh, the streets in Port Elizabeth today absolutely shut down uh, that we can see there absolute standstill we're seeing uh, the crowds as they continue to embark on the embankments there um, stopping in the middle of the road we're seeing phones uh, from far and wide everybody trying to make sure that they can take a glimpse of their heroes of these spring box. All right, possibly uh, Tabiso could hear us now. Tabiso, we do know that it is another pit stop that the Springboks are possibly going to be coming to later this afternoon. Take us through the excitement you're in. Thank you, Mathe Shanche. Well, we're still outside the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium. You can see when we got here, there were not as many clowns, but as you can see with our shots right now, the crowds are building up. They know, in fact, the man, that the gentleman in the car key sort of top, he's been rehearsing how to do interviews. I think he wants to take our jobs. By the way, it's been fun and jovial for us. As you can see there, the fans enjoying themselves. Kids, I think the nice and important thing is seeing all these youngsters come out. And again, we were speaking about whether this well, victory, the Rugby World Cup victory, will play any part as far as unity is concerned. Believe you me, as it stands, all through the colour lines, everyone speaks of Polisi, Mapimpi. It's, it's, it's a plethora of, 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 of voices that we hear, and SABC News, well, and we've been lucky to be, in fact, privileged to be able to bring all these live pictures of South Africa. A United South Africa, speaking to an older gentleman earlier, in fact, he's right here behind me. Let me go and have a chat with him. I was, I was actually looking for him. Sir, I'd like to have a chat to you, sir. We were talking earlier, we were talking earlier and you discussed how important this has been for unity in the country. Uh, the country is very united now and I hope it can remain like that. This is a time, it's green and gold, let's stick and stay together. Well, I'm going to try and move around again so we get more voices and as far as concerned. I'm going to ask the guys, it's, 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 it has been a bit tough, guys, I'm, guys, please, please behave. Okay, Shantae, we're going we're to try and get some order running here. And unfortunately, guys, we're going to try and get some order here because unfortunately we can't do this this way. As you can see there, we, we get mobbed everywhere we go, basically. Everyone wants to have a look quick, see, and chat to the SABC and, and send their views in as far as what is concerned. I mean, sending their messages to all South Africa, especially the Springbok fans. So I'm going to have a chat with you off camera. So far, it's been, it's been amazing. The past couple of days, South Africans on the streets everywhere. Um, just to uh, uh, reiterate what you've just said, uh, as you can see, um, um, the atmosphere is electric. Uh, and just to go back to what the box have actually managed to do, uh, they've managed obviously to unite the whole country. Um, we're just patiently waiting for them. Uh, we actually don't know whether they're coming from Utnek, but we're just wait patiently waiting for them just to uh, um, um, celebrate with everyone. Young man, you've been waiting patiently. What are your thoughts? You said you have a special message. I'd like to hear from the kids. What is your message to the Springboks? Uh, um, we're really proud that um, the book have won the World Cup. So it's like really, it's, it's really exciting for all of us. It's very exciting for us. Mama, I'm not going to give you the microphone. No, because it might go. No, I'll, I'll give you a job, yes, but I'm not going to give you the microphone. Yeah? Otherwise, we might just not be able to carry on. Ma'am, speak to us. It's been a wonderful day. Everywhere we've gone, the crowds have come out. Okay. First of all, I want to introduce myself. I'm the officer commander of Area Military Health Unit East NK. I am here today in my regalia of a different uh, cap to say to the pocket, thank you very much for what you have done, for your patriotism, for being there and represent the, company, the, the country, for representing us. You know, we go out there to Burundi, DRC, uh, forming relations with Africa, but you have formed relations with the world for us. We thank you so much what you have done. We will forever be in your debt as South Africa. Thank you so much. From Amu Eastern Cape, hooray!
there's somebody at the top there who would like to have a chat with you. Guys, I'm going to ask us to behave so that I'm able to, I'm going to ask you to slow down so I'm able to address everyone. Please, please, I'm going to, please ma'am, please ma'am, I'm going to ask you to slow down so we can have, everyone's going to get a chance to speak guys, so let me, let me speak to this young man. How are you doing young man? I'm fine. Speak to me. Let me, I was asking your peers, some other guys your age, I was asking who their favorite player is and, okay, why are you here first and foremost? Because I'm being my best player. So let me guess, you're playing wing when you grow up? Mm. <laughs> my Pimpi plays wing, how are you going to be my Pimpi fan if you don't know? Because yes. it runs fast. It runs fast. Somebody said my Pimpi can lose to Chesil and Kobe, do you think that's true? No. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am? Yes, I understand. You say you came all the way from yes. Johannesburg. Yes. Hi, I'm here for Faf. Yeah. Oh, Faf Duplessis. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. When, he, when, when the yeah, scrum like that, then he's coming like that, and Faf pick the ball and yeah. throw it. And my next one is Kobe. Go, Baka. Mixed reaction all over the place. And, uh, let's try and uh, please, ma'am. Please, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What are we going to try and do? As I said, we're going to try and get as varying voices as possible. So I'm going to try and watch out through behind you. There's a, there's a vehicle. Uh, we're trying to mix it up as much as possible. Now, earlier in the day, as I said, there's a gentleman who has been rehearsing on how to do this interview. I'm going to bring him in right now. This man, throughout the morning, you promised that you'll try and do some commentary for us. Chief. Let me bring you in here. I was telling Shante before she came to us yes, yes. that since we arrived, yes. I saw you, you had a studio, you had cameras rolling on you. Yes. What were you rehearsing? I was actually trying to, to actually um, show you guys, you see the arm guys, about, um, you know, and, 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 and you, you, you need to understand, we haven't had this much fun and this much enjoyment since way way since world cup days you see and us as a country we've had a tough year as a country so to enjoy something like this is priceless it's just priceless sir. I, 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 I gather you, 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 you had i gather you watched the world cup so if you'd watched the world cup which besides winning the cup there were moments i'm sure you thought ah oh, we're not going to make it or you knew throughout from before we left that we should win it the first moment was when they actually subbed Kolisi out in, in his first match. I was like, how would you do that? He's our captain. He's here because of us. He's here because of us. How could you do that? Other than that, I haven't had any other doubt. I just knew the boys were going to make it anyways. Now, here's, 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 a, here's, another, here's another question. Here's a question. And as far as Sia Kolisi and the importance of Eastern Cape, in particular Sia, you guys... Apparently today you said you wanted to be Sia Kolisi Day in a public holiday. I don't know, is that true? We can arrange that. I can talk to the mayor and call him. I've got his number on speed dial, by the way. We can arrange that within no time. Well, let's move around again and try to get some more views from the public. As I said, in fact, I'm going to ask people, guys, there's a truck coming behind us, so please let's get out of the, of the road. Uh, please try and follow me so we get safe. We're going to try and move away this way a little bit. So, as you can see, as I was saying earlier, there's mixed and varying views as far as this World Cup's concerned. Another family that have been here quite a while is, I'm going to speak to this lady. They're sitting down. I remember when we got here they asked us if they can have if they can even sit where they're sitting ma'am ma'am when when we got here i remember you asked me if you're allowed to sit there and you've been there patiently waiting yes we have we've been so excited to see the booker we've come all the way from bathurst eastern cape speak to us young in fact can i speak to your kids this is fine young man how are you good you're good okay so you watch the world cup right yeah who is your favorite player? And if you say to me Fafta Clack, then I promise you you're going to try and make him president. <laughs> you're not sure? You do know. You, Andrew, you know you're Andrew, let's bring Andrew. No, Andrew, I think he's got dust in his face. Okay, let's stand up a little bit and try and move around again. As I said, varying views, young and old, every single one of them are out here trying to get a glimpse of the spring box. I'm going to try and ask this boy if you can pan across to the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium. That's where we're expecting the box to come through and have a lunch a bit later on so as i'm saying massive reaction and as far as that is concerned we're going to try and see if we can get some more action on this side and try and move around in fact there's that man see that man He's